Do you ever doubt yourself in the dream you have? Today we're talking about waking your dream and making that dream a reality on this episode of Coffee with Tea. So please stick around and enjoy the show. Welcome, my friends, to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I am your host, Tanya Chala, and I'm excited because we're going to be talking to Annalise Seaborn, and we're going to talk about waking your dream. What does that mean? Waking the dream. I'm sorry. I'm waking my dream up right oh, now. Wake your I'm- dream. <laughs> no, that is what it is. Wake your dream. Oh, okay. I haven't yeah. waken the dream, so I just want to make sure I got it right. And I was like, it. so I was like, it. all right, we're going to wake your dream this morning. So <laughs> it's a fun conversation already. <laughs> so I'm going to um, turn it over and welcome Miss Annalise to the conversation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you being so here. much. Great to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So um, like you said, we're going to wake in your dream this morning. And but before we really dive into that kind of conversation and stuff like that, tell a little bit about who you are and, you know, maybe a little bit of how you've been dealing with this whole reopening of the pandemic and everything like that. So, you know. Tell a little bit about who you are and, and, you know, what can we expect from this conversation? Yeah, well, you can expect to hear a lot about (laughs) how I'm sort of the guinea pig of my own life and it's for your sake. Um, I really feel my personal conviction, like being a life coach, I feel like my personal conviction, step one, is that I have to be doing this stuff for myself, right? So you can imagine COVID was like, okay, this is getting real, like here I am needing to apply every single tool I've ever even thought of. Right. Um, so my name is Annalise Seaborn. It's great to be here with you guys today. Um, yeah, there's so much, right. Um, so what COVID really did for me, I was kind of realizing that in the beginning, when things started to get real, the shutdown started to happen. I think we all remember where we were at when we heard we weren't going back to work, right? Because it wasn't a choice for the first time in our lives. Like we didn't have the choice to go. Um, a lot of us didn't anyways. I know there's some of us that were working from home at the time, but for me, it was definitely a shock. And I realized probably within the first month um, or two <laughs> that I needed to start making things real where I'm at. I needed to start finding my own choices because it felt like so many things have been taken away. And what I realized was there's so many things that I rely on to distract me from spending time with myself. Old QT with yourself. Oh, yes. You know? <laughs> we love it, right? So I realized, man, I collect books. I collect tools, I collect training, I collect um, all kinds of research, I collect things. And I was very much like face to face last year with when am I giving myself time to use them? Because now all I have is time during COVID. And I was very uncomfortable with it. And I I had to come face to face with man, I am not um, in the space I thought I was like, on an emotional level. Um, I'm not in the space I thought I was, um, I would have told you, like, I come from a Christian perspective. Okay. So I'm, um, everything that I do is kind of through a faith lens and I was face to face with, do I actually believe what I would tell somebody I believe, right? Is it showing up in my life? Do I find my stability in faith or am I finding my stability in all of these other things that I count on for my routine, for my security, you know, income, all of that stuff. So man, I had so many questions for myself and only time to answer those things, right? Like, I think for a lot of us, we felt sort of a struggle to be sane last year because there were so many mixed messages we were getting from the top down. Um, It just wasn't handled in a very clear way, but also any messages we were getting were filtered through the internet, which as we know, has 1.8 billion, like, different ways to do things. So if we thought we were going to land because we were convinced from something we found online, that was not going to be true either. So yeah, we were kind of in for a rough road there. So I also realized kind of early on, if I'm going to stay sane, I need to get clear about what I care about, what I believe, 
and where I'm going to land. Where am I choosing to land at the end of each day? Because it was really a daily thing, right? And that's definitely taken me through into this year too. It was an overhaul for me last year. Um, I didn't read 1 million books. Like some people were saying, hey, I've got all this time. To like, I get it. Like, that's awesome. But I did make myself read. There were, yeah, two or three books last year that were just so pivotal and so, so good. It pushed right. me into a different mindset, you know? Right, right. That I, It was to me like, uh, I mean, it was a, for those who, who suffered loss and I, you know, I lost friends and family percent. too. You know, yeah. I would never want to go, you know, take that back. But then, you know, sometimes I, you know, they always say we go through rough times to really figure out what's important for you. So this is yes. basically what you're saying. You, you, you had to peel back the layers and that's what you did for yourself, right? Exactly. There was so much struggle and so much hardship and it's a matter of dealing with the both and, right? Just like you're saying is like honoring that grieving that we've all had to do, um, respecting that, letting ourselves feel it. I lost people that I cared about as well. It's a real thing. You know, the pandemic hit us in very real ways and gave us real losses of people that we care about. Um, but then, like I said, like for me, for sanity, it was like, I need to pair this with something that I'm gaining out of it and not just like get sucked into the black hole of being trapped, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, it's like when, like you said, is you, you have the, the good and the bad. And, yeah. But then if you figure out, like, what what do I need to focus on? Right. Uh, let's talk about your distractions, you said, because I liked how you, you know, you made me light up when you talked about the distractions. So is that part of like um, when you talk about waking in the dream? Is that yeah. like part of it is like identifying your distractions? How did you Honestly, do that? Honestly, yeah. Um, and I named my coaching business. So I've been coaching for four years. Um, I named it really early on wake your dream, because for me, I, I am not one of those people that was blessed to have like a really clear vision of exactly what my dream job would look like, right? Like, or exactly what career path to take. Um, I kind of went on my own winding road uh, to find myself here. But when I landed on life coaching, everything was so crystal clear about who I am and how I'm wired and who I'm made to be and still giving me the option to have, to make these choices, to have these choices, um, clear to me. These are choices that I have to make for my own life. So yeah, distractions are a big part of it. Um, becoming a coach put me in a position. I had to dismantle things that I thought were true about me. Um, like hands down, these are true things about me. This identifies me. Um, this defines me, those types of things. Like your self-perception is so powerful. And I have been like on a journey (laughs) with this of like, wake your dream. Oh my word. It means so many other layers of what does that mean? Right. If you're going to wake the dream that's inside of you, what is that going to feel like? what's it going to involve in order to let something in or let ourselves like receive new knowledge about ourselves. We have to be willing to let go of other things because they're in the way, right? There's like a push and pull there. So wake your dream. I mean, it might sound a certain way, which it certainly did to me in the beginning. I didn't realize how much I had to let go of dude. And these distraction things, I think we can get caught up in culture. Um, Our culture has a very specific pace, right? Like They're like, okay, your success is found out here. It's found in these certain outcomes. You can measure it by these certain statistics. Um, Other people around us are doing these things that we need to pay attention to. Am I measuring up? Am I not? Like we have that feeling inside of us. Wake your dream means, are you giving yourself a minute to pay attention to what you want? How would you define success? How would you want to spend your attention and your energy every day? and your money. If you think about attention and energy and money, they're all resources, right? So we spend them, we pay them. Those are the costs that we pay toward other things in our life. Are we intending to use these things toward what we're spending them on? Or are the other things just like taking it from us, right? So for me, that's what distractions meant like and have meant to me as I've, you know, unfolded layers of myself every year, kind of, I mean, guys, this is a lifelong process and I'm just at the tip of the iceberg. Apparently like we can think that we know something like 
wake your dream. Yes. Like that's the name I want for my coaching business. I love it. It means exactly what this has been showing me. I want to show my clients. They can wake their dream. They have a dream, even if they don't think they do. And like, here I am, right? Like continuing to dig deeper and continuing to see there are things in the way that I don't want there. They're old, like pictures of myself that I, I don't want there anymore. And there are old pictures of myself that I want to pay more attention to because those things are really important for me to intend to be. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can tell I, I kind of. I, I can tell like... you light up. So that's why I said <laughs> I'll let you go, because if I can tell you that you're passionate about it, then, you know, everybody else can pick up on it, which is yeah. really a good moment for me to say, if you're picking up with Annalisa's drop because she's dropped some gems already, please give us a <laughs> like, you know, like. Get to uh, hit that like button down there and possibly follow up with a comment down below so we can follow up. But we're going to really dive into yeah. she talked about the light in others. It's also in you. And I know yeah. we talked about a little bit about that. So as uh, uh, from what I'm understanding and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, this is an ongoing journey. And the, the more you keep digging about who you are, what you like, then that's how people can figure out. Yeah. What is it that's their passion and their purpose? Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. What's going to make your life meaningful? Well, you're only going to find that if you pay attention to you. And if you do that, you know, you take the time and you spend that time, right? Time is a resource. If you get out of your comfort zone a little bit and spend that time with yourself, figure out what your thoughts are, figure out what your definitions of things are. I mean, language has been like my word choices for what I use, like inside of myself, that matters. If I'm using, you know, negative language, um, can't or never, or, um, just simply not like, that's not me. You know what I mean? Things like that. I've noticed in myself, those things limit me saying like should, or, um, yeah, give me another one. Right. Like there's a lot of, (laughs) there's a lot of should, should like words. Right. Um, but those represent the fact that I'm basing my thought about what I should be doing purely on external pressures. Right. So yeah, it's just paying attention to the words that you're using. Is that what you want? I had no idea. I had so much choice in my own life. And the light you see in others is shining in you too. That quote um, is really important to me. And I know that's why you're bringing it up. And I love that. That's from, um, I follow an artist, author, poet, Morgan Harper Nichols. Um, I follow her on Instagram and that's a quote that she did an art piece around and the light you see in others is shining in you too, just shows me like the beauty of being reminded the comparison game that we all can find ourselves in very quickly and we can stay there deceptively long. It's not even true. It's literally not even true. If there's something you're envying or jealous of, or like, um, you wish was happening for you, but it's obviously, it, obviously, right. It's only happening for other people. It's just simply not true. It's thoughts you're choosing to think about what you see and you only see a fraction, right? So if you're seeing a light in somebody else, like check that in your spirit, there's enough light to go around. And in fact, you've got your own light in you too. Like if you paid right, your attention, your energy back to yourself, instead of paying the attention and energy towards somebody else's light in life, like you could see that, you know, you could really help yourself ignite that light again, and then really focus on how do I shine my own light brighter? That's what wake your dream is about, right? That, that concept for me, that's what that's about. And I'm not saying ignore other people. I'm not saying like put other people down. Cause man, if there's enough light to go around and we each have our own light, then it's irrelevant. Like it's irrelevant to think that somehow I'm in competition with someone else. Like I'm made to be me and she's made to be her. And what a freaking beautiful thing that we live in a world that's big enough for all of our visions to coexist and actually encourage and inspire each other. We could either use it as competition, build walls up, or we could encourage and inspire each other and really collaborate, which Tanya, I love that this is like exactly your vision too. Like I have a question, Biggie, you know, because I'm, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking about those people, who are, you know, because everybody's always going to be on their different spectrum of their journey and stuff like yes. that. And I know Definitely. you started off with, you know, going within. So for those who were thinking, well, Annalise, it's not being selfish. What would you say to that? Mm, 
I'd say check your spirit too. It can cross a line into selfishness, right? Um, Something that I've been on a growth track recently about is, am I taking ownership of when I'm going down a path in me that I don't like? Okay. There can be an arrogance and a pride thing that starts to happen if we only fixate like right on ourselves. I'm not talking about fixating. I'm talking about like, even in, even in Bible terms, right? When God gives us the the top two commandments, he said, the first one is love the Lord, your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second one is love your neighbor as yourself. And the way we're usually taught that verse is only outward focus, right? Which is great. Like having a servant's heart, I think no matter your faith belief system, having a servant's heart is like, something that of course we would desire to have and desire other people have. But the next part of that verse says, love your neighbor as yourself. If I don't have practice loving me and caring for me, you know, you think of that buzzy, (laughs) trendy word self-care, right? That term self-care. I totally like top, top on the list for the stereotype of that in my head was like, Okay. So you're getting your nails done a lot. Like I didn't, I did not like make a personal connection with that term, um, for quite some time. Like I didn't understand how it could fit for me, but what, what I've been growing in is like self-care means caring for myself. Could I genuinely say at the end of each day, when I, my head hits the pillow at night, did I care for myself today? So that's the kind of focus and energy or the, that's the kind of focus for your attention and energy that I'm talking about. It's really more of a caring and nurturing thing. It's a cultivating thing. You know, we get to take ownership and responsibility for our lives because we like it, because we care about ourselves, because we actually respect ourselves. Like we get to really like um, flex that muscle for maybe the first time in our adult lives. Like, man, oh, it's been a mind blower for me to act like an adult in my own life in these ways. When That's a good say one. That's a really good right? one. Yes, yes. Oh, my I like word. That. I know it's amazing. You know, we can go deeper into this conversation, but this is like the just the tip of the iceberg. So I want to mm-hmm. I want to make sure we capture the one key message that you want anybody to take mm-hmm. away from. If they don't hear anything else that you have to say today, what's the one thing you want to leave the audience with? You do have it in you. You do have a dream in you. You do have capability to make that dream your reality. You literally do. That is a fact. Now, whether you choose to see it that way, that's part of your journey, but you've got time. You know, people say life is short. There's all this like fear and like scarcity around how we think about our lives and how we think about the choices we've already made. You know, we get fixated on the past, like, but I messed up so much or like, ah, but I struggle in this area. This, this stuff is really like, I have a weakness here. Focus on what you have, focus on your strengths and it's just going to grow. That's how your brain is made is to focus on what you can do. So yeah, I would say you have it in you. You're already capable. And just like Tanya told me at the beginning, um, I'm the expert in my life. I'm the expert in what I do. Um, You guys are the expert in your life. You're the expert in what you're not great at, and you're the expert in your strengths. And all we need to do with what we're not great at (laughs) is get some help. It's honestly as simple as that. Let's not let our pride get in the way of our growth because you want to freaking be somewhere else in your life. You want to make changes. You want to see that happen for you. Make the commitment and you are going to get your mind blown because you are already capable. That's awesome. That's awesome. What a wonderful way to wrap it up. And so my last, I actually, I don't, why I always say this for those who watch me, you know, I say this all the time. I have multiple questions. So one of the key questions I want to ask is where can people find more questions, more information about you, your services and what you do? Yes. Thank you for, (laughs) thank you for asking. Okay. So I have a Facebook page, um, my business, wake your dream coaching. Um, that's a Facebook page, but I also have a link tree link that can get you all of my social media links. It gets you a link to your free session. I give the first session for free to anybody that wants it. If you want to continue the conversation. Um, so that's just, uh, how, how does that go? The link tree link? Should I just 
Can I? Can Don't worry about it? that. Make sure you check it down below. So we're yes, going to have it in the check description it below box. <laughs> because that's going to have links to literally everything. You can pop your session into my calendar. Um, you could DM me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram at Coach Annalise. A-N-N-A-L-I-E-S-E because my name has a lot of letters in it. Um, Yeah. So I would love to hear from you whatever way you want, because I would love to continue the conversation. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, cause I I always say I have one more question, but then I always have more. So I'm (laughs) paying attention to my thoughts, right. And my words. So my question would be Miss Annalise, it was a pleasure talking to you. Would you be willing to come back and maybe have a deeper dive into more of a conversation on some other stuff? It would be my joy. I would love, love to. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> thank you thank you and i want to say thank you for your time thank you for your insight that you shared it's been a pleasure to talk to you mm, you too thanks so much Tanya. and i also remind everybody please that feedback is welcome links that annalise mentioned will be posted down in the description box below so please make sure you check out the description down if you've enjoyed all the insight that annalise has shared and you enjoyed it please remember hit that like button smash that like button if you want and uh, please put a comment down below and if you want to continue to get all the great insights that like Ms. Annalise is sharing and that we have more great guests coming on, please hit that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow and create your own path. And we'll see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right. Bye bye. Hi, everyone. This is Tanya again, popping in to say thank you for listening to today's show. Coffee with Tea interviews are always free. And if you're enjoying the wisdom and insights that are being shared, please stay and grow with us and show your financial support. You can buy us coffee or become a monthly supporter. Links are posted in the description box. And again, I wanted to personally say thank you for tuning in.